Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Miriam Ohamu. I am the um, Senior Program Officer overseeing the uh, Doctoral Dissertation Research Abroad Program. Um, and today uh, we're going to present to you um, a webinar on the application process for the FY17 DDRA program. Um, Hopefully, everybody is able to hear me uh, either via the phone or uh, on the webinar itself um, now that we've begun. So if you have any uh, technical issues, um, uh, you can, I believe, what, are, what should people do for technical issues? Um, Send um, send a chat if you're not able to hear me right now, and uh, we'll try to quickly weed those issues out so we can um, so we can get started here. If you're having trouble access or hearing the um, the actual um, content of the webinar, um, the audio, um, I'm going to send right now in the chat box the um, the call-in information for the phone. So try that um, so that you can view the materials um, as we scroll through the slides, but then you can listen along on the phone. All right, so with that, um, now that uh, I've sent out the, the dial-in number um, to call in, um, if you're having trouble with audio, you can just call in on the phone and listen along um, if you follow, follow along with the webinar. Um, so with that, we'll get started. Um, as we go through the presentation, um, if you have questions, feel free to um, use the chat box to send them. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to address them either with the webinar contents themselves or during the Q&A um, portion of the presentation at the very end. Um, what questions we do not get to during uh, the, the time uh, allotted here today, well, um, uh, you're welcome to email to the, um, to the DDRA inbox, which is ddra at ed.gov and um, we'll respond to those uh, as soon as possible. Um, so on slide one, it's got the, um, it's got the, the inbox email address. Um, so you can, you can shoot those there, or again, use the chat feature um, to ask your questions as all of the phones um, are muted. So I won't be able to, to hear you. Okay, so we'll get started. Um, So again, um, for those who didn't hear the very beginning, um, my name is Miriam Ohamu. Um, I'm the uh, Acting Senior Program Officer uh, managing the Fulbright-Hayes Doctoral Dissertation Research Abroad uh, Program, aka DDRA. Um, and the purpose of today's presentation is to introduce you to the program and to um, offer some um, tips on applying for the program um, which, um, which closes on March 14th, 2017. So we're just about a month out from um, that deadline.
and uh, my name is on the second slide as well as the first, um, so you have it. And uh, once more, the inbox for DDRA is DDRA at ed.gov. Okay, so the objectives of today's webinar, the outline of what we'll cover, we'll do a quick overview of the DDRA program, a description of the pre-award process, um, a description of the application review process, um, cover some application tips and best practices, and then we'll um, and then we'll cover questions and answers. Um, and if you're not able to hear, by the way, or if you um, have to jump off the call early, uh, have no fear because we will, um, we are actually recording this and we will um, post it to uh, our website um, for, for later use. Okay, so slide four, history of Fulbright programs and IFL. Um, so the, um, Fulbright-Hayes Act of 1961 um, is known as the Mutual Education and Cultural Exchange Act of 1961. Um, this is what authorizes our programs to exist um, and uh, was marshaled by United States Senator J. William Fulbright, um, enacted by the 87th United States Congress on September 21st, 1961, uh, the same month um, that the Foreign Assistance Act of 1961 and the Peace Corps Act of 1961 were enacted. Um, the international education programs were originally created under the National Defense Education Act and then uh, incorporated into the Higher Education Act, thus expanding the programs beyond the training of specialists and emphasizing the importance of international studies as a matter of general educational importance. Um, Section 102B6 of the Mutual Education and Cultural Exchange Act, or Fulbright-Hayes, created an overseas component to the otherwise domestically based international education programs under Title VI. To date, we have had over 5,600 fellows funded with um, under the Fulbright-Hayes DDRA program. Um, the DDRA program provides opportunities for scholars to conduct research overseas for um, six to 12 months in the field of, more, of modern foreign languages and area studies. Um, oh, and uh, IFL stands for the International and Foreign Language Education Office um, in the um, US Department of Education and we're the ones that um, administer this uh, grant program. A couple notable DDRA fellows include um, Dr. April Strickland, who is um, a 2008 DDRA fellow. Um, she's an anthropologist uh, on Oprah's Belief Series. Um, Ludwig Admick uh, was a 1964 DDRA fellow and is a University of Arizona um, Professor Emeritus um, currently publishing a book on Islam and um, began the Middle East Studies Department. Um, Dr. Lori Vasili uh, is, the, um, is another alum and uh, is the Fulbright Executive Director uh, in Nepal. And then finally, um, Dr. Jim Miller, who is the Fulbright Executive director uh, in Morocco. So moving on to slide five um, about the DDRA fellowship. Uh, um, the purpose of uh, Fulbright-Hayes DDRA is um, to provide opportunities to doctoral students to engage in full-time research abroad in modern foreign languages and area studies. Um, the, the, uh, for the purpose of this program, area studies um, is defined as an interdisciplinary program of comprehensive study 
of the aspects of a society or societies, including the study of their geography, history, culture, economy, politics, education, international relations, and language. Since area studies is broadly defined, um, we have had uh, students in many different disciplines apply every year. Um, DDRA is an annual competition and is an institutional grant that awards fellowships to research scholars. Um, the institution is um, kind of the main recipient um, and then kind of flows down uh, the funding to the individual fellows. Um, in terms of gen general eligibility requirements, um, an eligible applicant um, is an institution of higher education, so college or uh, university, um, and they are authorized to um, compile the individual um, appl applications of the fellows um, and submit them under kind of one um, university heading. Um, in terms of requirements for fellows, um, they must be a U.S. citizen or national um, or permanent resident, and they must be a graduate student in good standing at a U.S. institution of higher education. Um, the pro in terms of um, timeline, the uh, institutional project period is 18 months. Um, but students can request funding for a period of no less than six months and no more than 12 months. Um, and they must be consecutive. Um, this, um, this program is intended to provide assistance to students who are well on their way to becoming the next batch of area specialists. Um, And the, finally, the um, applications themselves um, must be submitted electronically via the U.S. Department of Education's G5E application system. And we'll cover kind of the, um, the, the nitty-gritty of that uh, later on in the presentation. Okay, so moving to slide six, um, this is, uh, we'll cover the um, 2017 um, competition priorities. Um, the absolute priority is, um, is the geographic area. So the, um, the priority uh, is found in 34 CFR um, 75, uh, 105, um, anyhow, the citation is on the slide, um, on slide six. But in any case, um, the absolute priority is a research project that focuses on one or more of the following geographic areas, Africa, East Asia, Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands, South Asia, the Near East, Central and Eastern Europe and Eurasia, and the Western Hemisphere. Um, excluding, obviously, the United States um, and its ter uh, territories. Um, in terms of excluded countries, um, most in, in Western Europe uh, are excluded. Um, for an actual list, I'll quickly, um, I'll quickly go through um, Andorra, Austria, Belgium, Cyprus, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Malta, Monaco, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, the UK, uh, and Vatican City. So your um, research can, um, can focus on, on one or more of these areas, but um, obviously uh, not in the um, list of excluded um, um, countries. So um, more information on that can actually be found in the, um, in the Federal Register Notice. Um, so that, that is actually um, on our website. And I'll include um, 
I'll include a link to our website as well, um, kind of at the end. Um, I'll send it out to everyone so you can check that out. Hopefully you've actually looked at the uh, Federal Register Notice and the, um, the NIA, the Notice Inviting um, Applications also. Um, so um, shifting to um, the competitive preference priorities, um, so we'll focus on um, priority languages. So the um, Department of Education's um, list of priority languages, uh, those can also be found, um, it's quite an extensive list, so I won't go through um, all of them, but those can also be found in the Federal Register Notice. Um, and then secondly, the thematic focus on academic fields. Again, that's contained in 34 CFR. Um, and again, it's area studies which can be pretty broad, but, um, but the Code of Federal Regulations, which is what CFR stands for, um, can, can help you hone in on um, those academic fields. Uh, finally, the um, invitational priority um, focuses on um, applications from minority serving institutions, um, which uh, is an institution that's eligible to receive assistance under Part A of Title III, under Part B of Title III, and, or under Title V of the Higher Education Act. And I think those institutions will likely know if they qualify or not um, under that um, stipulation. Okay, so moving on to slide. Slide seven. Anyhow, so So, um, so now we're on slide seven. Um, this uh, will go briefly into the pre-award process um, and we'll delve a little more into um, funding and that, those sorts of things. Um, again, all of this is in the um, Federal Register Notice, um, but just to give you a, an idea of what we're talking about um, in dollars and cents, the estimated total um, amount available for uh, the FY 2017 award year will be um, $3,477,151. Um, the estimated range of fellowship, individual fellowship awards will be between $15,000 um, and $60,000. Um, the average size of the um, fellowship award, give or take, will be in the neighborhood of $33,000. $461, and then the estimated number of actual awards that we'll make um, will be roughly uh, just shy of 100 awards. Okay, and so um, the next slide is um, project director guidance. So the um, the, each institution um, must appoint a project director um, who assumes the responsibility to um, register in the G5E application uh, system, first and foremost, um, and also to advise and guide uh, individual student applicants, um, submit the entire application on behalf of uh, the institution to the um, U.S. Department of Education, um, they will also administer the grant and um, disperse funds to the fellows if they're awarded a grant um, and serve as the main um, point of contact for all of the um, fellows at that institution, uh, regardless of research topic or discipline. So even as you prepare your um, applications, um, make sure to reach out to um, you know, your, your university project director, um, and sometimes they can change, so make sure that you get, you know, uh, re uh, reach out and, and make sure you have the, 
the most up-to-date individual, um, and that person can really be your um, liaison uh, between the um, U.S. Uh, Department of Education um, and yourself. Uh, a lot of times, you know, these questions come up um, more than once, and the, the project director can really be the gatekeeper to um, answer your questions um, or escalate uh, questions up to us if necessary. Okay, so now going into project director review of applications. Um, the project director must review the following application materials prior to transmitting them in um, G5. Um, the Fulbright-Hayes uh, DRA application form, um, the uh, CV of the, of the um, fellow applicant, um, the project description um, and application narrative, and make sure it's compliant with uh, the application uh, guidelines. Um, the bibliography, um, the foreign language reference form, three graduate student reference forms, transcripts, letters of affiliation and host country supporting materials, and then institutional review board um, IRB narrative, if applicable. And that is the, um, that is the um, required documentation of using um, uh, human subjects. And um, someone just asked the question, um, do the project directors need to um, re-register each year? The answer is no, unless, um, unless that has changed. If there is a change in um, project director, uh, please send an email to ddra at ed.gov and we'll go about um, you know, updating the information. Um, otherwise, um, if, if it's the same from one year to the next, then um, carry on. Um, okay, so next slide, we'll talk about um, the fellowship eligibility. Um, a student is eligible to receive a DRA fellowship if the student is a citizen or national of the United States or is a permanent resident of the United States, um, is a graduate student in good standing at an eligible institution of higher education, and when the fellowship period begins, is admitted to candidacy in a doctoral, a doctoral degree program in modern foreign languages and area studies at that institution. Um, the fellow um, should also be planning a teaching career in the United States upon graduation or plan to apply uh, their language skills um, in areas vital to U.S. national security um, and other areas such as government, international development, and, and other various uh, professions. Um, and finally, they should possess adequate skills in the foreign language um, necessary to carry out dissertation, uh, the dissertation research project. Um, one important note um, is that uh, Fulbright-Hayes Fellows may not accept both a FUST IIE um, award and DDRA concurrently. Um, uh, the FUST stands for Fulbright U.S. Student Program. Um, so uh, basically for um, for FY17, if you have um, received a, another um, Fulbright uh, award, you are not um, eligible uh, to also accept um, DR, uh, DDRA funding. And we have in the application, there is a um, certification statement saying um, where you have to attest if you are you know, a recipient of another um, um, international studies type grant.
Oh, so just one more. So once more, um, you can apply to both DDRA and um, IIE Fulbright grants simultaneously, but you cannot accept both awards at the same time. So if you're selected for IIE and you attend the orientation or accept any funds, um, then you are deemed ineligible for DDRA. Okay, next slide, we'll just quickly go over the roles and responsibilities um, it, uh, during the application process. So first, the institution, um, this is the, uh, the college or university, um, uh, they should attend the DDRA technical assistance webinar, which you are, good job. Um, the appointed project director must register in G5. Um, the, the institution should make fellowship application materials available to the students. Um, they should accept and screen applications in accordance with the technical and academic criteria. Um, include student applications with institutional application. And then finally, um, at you know, award time, administer the grant um, and disperse uh, the funds. Um, the fellow uh, roles and responsibilities, um, they should contact the project, contact and work with the project director um, for institutional information. The fellow should also register in G5 to, um, to complete the application. Um, they should be working to um, solicit references, um, submit uh, the complete application in G5 on their side, um, and then submit Institutional Review Board um, IRB narrative to the project director for upload into G5. Then the third part of this is um, the referee. Um, they receive uh, the reference forms from the fellow, um, and they must uh, attest to the fellow's um, uh, credentials in the, in the language. Um, they complete and submit the reference form in G5, and then they um, will send the project director a copy of the reference form. Um, the, the fellow the referee is submitting all of this in G5 and then and obviously um, copying the project director, um, so the fellow will not see these forms. Um, also, just as a general rule of thumb, um, do not use any special characters in your, um, either in the, um, in the application materials um, or the forms. Okay, so now we'll chat a bit about the money. Um, so DDR, DDRA funds um, may cover expenses such as health and accident insurance for the um, student fellow, uh, books, technology directly related to the proposed research, um, e.g. flash drives, scanners, et cetera, um, travel within the host country, affiliation fees, if applicable, and then um, dependents. Um, what qualifies as a dependent uh, is a married spouse and uh, unmarried children under the age of 21. Um, dependents do not include common law spouses or domestic partnerships. Um, spouses, a legal, uh, spouse refers to a legally married uh, couple, gay or straight, legally recognized by a state. Children must have a uh, birth certificate um, to, to qualify as a dependent. Um, and then uh, finally, in terms of equipment, um, nothing should be purchased that lasts beyond the life of the grant. So no cars, um, <laughs> no heavy duty research equipment, et cetera. Okay, next slide, we'll uh, continue about financial provisions um, and we'll cover what's not, uh, what's not allowable in terms of cost. Okay, so uh, you can quickly read through there, um, basically no cars, <laughs> again, um, no travel outside of the immediate um, uh, research um, project 
um, no change fees or anything um, um, that relates to a, a change in itinerary or change in terms of what was approved um, in the award. Um, medical expenses, immunizations, um, physical exams, those are not allowable. Um, tuition or fees for study or projects conducted in the U.S. Um, and uh, dependent travel, that's an important one, that is not covered. Um, and if those sorts of costs are included in your budget, um, they will be eliminated during, um, during the application um, intake review. Yeah. Um, okay. All if you if you could all hold for just one second. I think my slides got a bit out of order. So just hold for a couple of minutes, and then we'll jump right back in. Did I? Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so just to recap, we're on slide 16. Um, the next section of the presentation we'll launch into is the um, application review process. Okay, so um, we'll quickly walk through the eligib eligibility screening process. Um, so quickly there on your screen um, is a kind of bulleted list um, of, the, um, of the eligibility, both on the institutional and student sides, um, and we've covered this um, uh, throughout the presentation. Um, on, the, on the institution side, um, there should be a registered project director, um, and the institution should have a DUNS number and a taxpayer ID number. Um, and the, um, on the student side, they should obviously be a U.S. Uh, citizen and or permanent resident, et cetera, um, be in good academic standing, um, planning careers in teaching or world areas uh, vital to national security. Um, they should not uh, concurrently um, be seeking DDRA and other federal um, grants and awards um, 
and they should be in good um, federal student loan um, status um, in terms of repayment, that is. Um, um, students who default on federal student loans are not eligible to apply. Um, and um, on the institutional side, um, any U.S. institution of higher education um, is eligible to participate. Um, and then again, they will be the um, they will be the legal grantee. So um, again, they kind of um, flow down the funds to the individual um, fellows. Um, this the person, um, the project director. Um, is generally a representative from the Office of the Dean of Graduate Studies or Student Affairs, um, or if the, the institution has um, an International Studies um, Department, that's generally where you can find uh, these folks. Okay, so now we'll talk about the um, technical review portion and scoring. Um, the uh, peer, um, the actual applications are scored um, uh, by peer reviewers um, who are world area specialists um, in foreign languages and area studies from higher um, education institutions, government agencies, and non-government um, organizations throughout the U.S. Um, peer reviewers determine technical scores in accordance with the competitive preference priorities, quality of the proposed project, and the qualifications of the applicant. Um, here in the, in the box, there's a quick, um, quick scoring um, matrix. Um, And then we'll we'll go through those all of those individual areas in greater detail in the um, the subsequent slides. Um, okay, so moving to slide nineteen. We'll talk about um, quality of the proposed project. So in this section, um, it's a maximum of 60 points. Um, the hypothesis statement research questions um, constitute 15 uh, maximum points. Theoretical issues, originality, and literature um, constitute 10 points. Preliminary research, 10 points. Justification for overseas research, 10 points. Dissemination plan is five points. And guidance and supervision from uh, either an individual um, advisor or a committee um, warrants a maximum of 10 points. Um, the next section is qualifications of applicants. Um, that warrants a maximum of 40 uh, points for that section, which comprises um, applic the applicant's academic record, um, 10 points, the academic strength in um, area studies, also 10 points. The applicant's language proficiency um, uh, gets a maximum of 15 points, and then an applicant's ability to conduct research uh, overseas uh, is five points. Uh, and then again, the, um, the um, absolute priority uh, is that the applications must address um, one or more of the seven geographic uh, regions, Africa, East Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, Near East, Central and Eastern Europe, Europe and Eurasia, and uh, the Western Hemisphere. So one or more of those um, regions must be uh, covered in the application. Um, competitive priority one uh, is uh, counts for three points 
Um, and that is a research project that makes use of any of the 78 languages um, from the U.S. Department of Education's list of priority languages. Um, again, uh, I won't <laughs> read through all 78 of those, but they will be found in the um, Federal Register notice and the, um, the notice inviting uh, application, uh, the NIA. Uh, again, um, I'll share a link um, to our website, um, which will have uh, another link to, uh, to the Federal Register notice so you can get more um, acclimated to uh, that list of, of languages. Um, competitive priority two uh, is um, the um, a research project uh, that's conducted in the field of economics, engineering, um, international development, mathematics, political science, public, public health, science, education, or technology. And the invitational priority, again, is the um, is, uh, center ground applications from minority serving institutions. Okay, moving on to slide 21, um, the proposal guidelines. Um, so just some handy tips on preparing uh, the proposal. Um, first, make sure that you address all the selection criteria in the order listed in the application packet. Um, reviewers should not have to search for that information. The easier you make it, uh, probably, the, the, better, the better off you'll be. Um, provide a detailed research plan, how you plan to do your research. Um, and then uh, include sufficient details about your research goals, uh, what do you intend to, um, to get out of, of, the, of the research. Provide a specific and detailed budget using uh, the correct maintenance amount. Um, we'll cover that, I think we'll cover that a bit. Um, uh, it is also um, the maintenance amounts um, themselves are based on the, um, the proposed research site um, and are, are um, um, provided by uh, the State Department, um, their guidelines on per diem amounts in these different world areas. So your budget should um, um, should correctly um, make use of the of the proper maintenance amount for your um, proposed research site. Um, and again, those those amounts um, are contained in the application package itself, um, and can fluctuate a bit. So during the application review. Um, don't be surprised if those amounts go up or down um, based on the most recent State Department um, guidance. Um, the, um, let's see, also um, avoid gramma grammatical errors um, or specific prof professional jargon um, and try not to use acronyms without defining them um, as that would obviously confuse a reviewer and not be a favorable um, thing. <laughs> um, use persuasive descriptions of your research. And finally, remember, uh, you must convince the panel um, of, your, um, of your need um, and worth of your research. So be clear, concise, and convincing. Okay, so moving on to the next section. Okay, so slide 24, application tips. Um, 
Okay, so as we've covered, Um, as we as we've covered, um, you should register on g5.gov um, and do so early. Um, I know that um, even on my side, I was having um, plenty of issues with publishing the application. Um, so um, make sure you register early um, and click through and um, and make sure that you know you don't run into any technical issues. Um, and back up and save your documents um, just in case. It's always a good um, practice, especially, uh, you know, if there uh, are any system-wide issues. Um, um, an important, very important um, reminder is do not use any special characters um, or non-English characters in any form or document for, um, for both the fellowship applicants and referees. So um, your language uh, reference forms that the, refer that the referees fill out, um, and in addition to the fellowship application uh, documents should not contain any um, foreign characters, any special characters, no asterisks, no umlauts um, due to um, system like constraints, uh, it will not accept those, um, those types of um, characters and um, we would hate to have an application um, disqualified um, because it was unable to um, move through the process because of that. And, of course, do not wait until the last minute to submit. Um, we're, the system likely will be flooded on the last day on March 14th. So um, in, in the off chance that a server crashes or something, um, something happens with the system, you don't want to be uh, one of those that's, um, that's, that's shut out um, because you waited till you know, 4.15 on March 14th. Uh, that is the closing date, by the way, um, March 14th, 2017. Um, just quickly um, related to G5, um, with uh, reference to, um, to the reference form, the um, language reference forms, um, I've gotten a couple of questions about this so far. Um, so make sure um, the fellowship applicant um, should say or must save a draft of the DDR, DDRA form with their name, institution, country of research, and language. And then after that, the reference forms will appear. Um, make sure that um, as an applicant, um, you hit submit to complete the application um, submission. And referees also have a submit uh, button um, at the end of their section um, that completes their portion. After that, um, both, uh, or after that, the applicant should receive um, an email from G5 saying that their, uh, that their reference um, was completed. If you do not get that, then that likely means it was not submitted. So make sure you loop back with your referees um, to make sure that that part was completed. Um, oh, another important um, thing to note, um, some, um, some references using overseas servers may not be able to submit forms in G5 on behalf of applicants. So make sure, um, again, this is another uh, um, cautionary warning to um, complete your application materials on the early side. That way you have time to um, reach out to the referee to make sure uh, that they are able to submit the um, materials successfully in G5, especially if they're using um, 
if they're overseas or using a foreign server. Um, finally, um, students must submit their individual applications to the project director um, using G5. Again, um, a, lot of, a lot of the project directors have been doing this for many years, um, or at least have uh, experience with a couple of DDRA uh, award rounds. So if you're unclear on the responsibilities, um, make sure to um, reach out to your project director um, and work with them closely to make sure that um, everyone's, um, everyone's um, part of the process is flowing uh, properly. Um, also, project directors should register as um, project directors, not as students. And fellows should select no to the question, are you registering as a Fulbright, or I'm sorry, as a fellowship Fulbright Hayes doctoral dissertation uh, or faculty abroad director? The answer to that is no. Okay, so slide 26, um, important information. Um, the DDRA-related um, DDRA questions can be sent to that um, DDRA inbox, which I monitor um, daily. Um, that address, again, is ddra at ed.gov. Um, our Eiffel um, International and Foreign Language Education Office um, our website link um, is listed there as well. Um, for G5 technical assistance, if you have problems with, um, you know, an error message on a screen or, you know, a page going blank after you hit submit or something like that, um, those are 100% the types of questions they should be able to help you with. Uh, that phone number is 888-336-8930. If they are unable to solve your, your technical issue, um, chances are they will loop back to me as the project um, or as the program officer. So if it's, you know, falls on the, on the policy side, they'll reach out to me anyhow, most likely. Um, so reach out to them when um, things seem to be uh, going um, a little haywire on the technical side. Um, also, G5 has an online training module. Um, you can find it on their landing page if you have uh, questions on um, the actual mechanics of the G5 site. And once again, the application deadline um, for, um, for this FY17 round of DDRA is March 14, 2017 at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And once again, uh, my plug is please do not wait till the last minute. Um, do it early just in the off chance that, um, that there are system issues or something happens. Um, it's better to sort it out earlier rather than later. And I will quickly, um, I will copy and paste this web link and send it in the chat box. Um, uh, just so you guys have it. Anyhow, I'll do, I'll do that at a at another another point in time. Um, okay, we'll send a link out. Um, okay. And finally, now's the time uh, where you guys can um, uh, send questions um, in the chat box, and I'll try my best to get to all of them. If not, then um, again, you can send them to ddra at ed.gov and I will um, I'll follow up with you uh, individually. Um, one, uh, I'll, I'll preface that, um, this Q&A session by saying 
A lot of these questions are likely contained in the application package and or the Federal Register notice. So I know I'm getting questions, um, I've gotten some questions already about page limits. That is contained definitely in the, um, fed, in the NIA, the Notice Inviting Applications. So please make sure you go through and read every single document in the application package, um, and chances are the answers to your questions will be contained therein. And there, there are free, there's also a um, frequently asked questions um, document in the application uh, package. There's um, there's one there's guidelines for student applicants as well as um, a section uh, for uh, institutional project directors. Okay, so um, page limit to the CV that is in the NIA. Um,
Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, I think we got dropped. Um, so hopefully, I'll just quickly scroll up to a couple of common questions. Um, okay, so there was a question about um, Oh gosh, let's see. Yeah, so one question came up. Um, if you uh, previously received a um, Fulbright Hayes Award um, in the past, can you um, can you apply this round? The answer is yes. Um, the exclusion is for uh, the same awards made in the same fiscal year. Um, the um, IRB approval does not have to be completed at the time of the application. Um, this uh, one question came up um, of whether or not, um, whether you have to be a student of modern foreign languages and area studies. Um, the question, or the answer to that is um, you can be a doctoral uh, candidate in area studies, um, but um, the language priority must be met uh, and the research is obviously intended to further your study uh, of um, said priority language. So, um, but you do not have to be formally seeking a PhD in, say, Hebrew. Uh, tuition fees for your home institution are not allowable, as we covered. Uh, can applicants hold dual citizenship? Yes, as long as uh, one of those two um, is uh, the U.S. program is open to US, res or U.S. citizens and permanent residents. And um, So the one question that came up is, in the G5 profile, is the project director, should they be listed as the G5 applicant? And that's correct. Uh, 
Oh, and I'll, um, I'll take uh, a second to, um, to copy and paste the link to our website, um, which will um, contain a link to um, the application package. Um, and again, um, the application package has uh, the list of um, the list of requirements and and all of those fun things. The actual um, uh, application package um, can be found on our website, um, but I would advise to um, reference the one in G5. Um, that one is kind of the the um, the, the sort of final word on as far as the application is concerned. Stand by and I'll copy and paste the um, the address uh, the web address for our uh, website. Okay, everyone, um, we are now uh, considerably over time. Um, I appreciate everyone joining today and sorry about the technical issues. Um, if we did not get to your questions, which I'm sure uh, we didn't even address um, half of, please uh, feel free to, um, to send them via email to ddra at ed.gov um, and our program staff will um, respond as soon as possible. Uh, again, we're just about a month out from uh, the, the deadline, um, so I'm sure, um, I'm sure you'll encounter um, questions as you go through the application process. Um, again, many of the answers to your questions can be found in the, um, in the NIA uh, the, um, and the, the Federal Register notice and on our website. Uh, we will also be um, posting this webinar um, to our website, um, so you can uh, you can on demand um, access uh, the information from the slides. And um, just a final plug: uh, please work closely with your project director. Um, since they're uh, the main um, sort of repositories. Uh, for um, the ins and outs of, of um, managing this uh, program. Thank you all very much.